If you use a benzodiazepine for more than two to four weeks, you have a 20% likelihood of developing benzo-induced neurological dysfunction or BIND. And so in today's video, we're going to be doing an overview of benzo-induced neurological dysfunction or BIND. So what is BIND? Well, BIND describes a constellation of symptoms, primarily these neurological symptoms, which can be physical or psychological, that result from neuroadaptation, a physical dependence, or this neurotoxicity that can develop from benzodiazepine use. And this term was proposed as the nomenclature for this collective group of symptoms that was presented in the largest survey known to date of benzodiazepine users that surveyed over 1,200, 1,207 to be exact, current and former users of benzodiazepines. And this research paper came out in 2023 describing the long-term consequences of this benzo-induced neurological dysfunction. And so the reason they came up with this term is because there have been many confusing terminologies associated with this withdrawal phenomenon that occurs as a result of benzodiazepine use, which can lead to this benzodiazepine injury. And some of the terms have been things like subacute withdrawal, postacute withdrawal, a postacute withdrawal syndrome, rebound syndrome, and many other terms such as that. And so what exactly are these symptoms of BIND or this benzodiazepine-induced neurological dysfunction? Well, these symptoms, as I mentioned, are neurologically based, and they can be things like cognitive impairments, some psychological symptoms, some physical symptoms can also be present and manifest, sleep disturbances are often very common, sensory changes have also been reported, as well as some motor problems. And the thing I wanna emphasize with these BIND symptoms is that these symptoms are above and beyond what the person was prescribed the benzodiazepine for. So the medication is no longer helping the person, but in fact, making them feel quite a bit worse. And so in that survey, it actually showed that many people were affected by having a collection of these symptoms by either job loss or loss of relationships. And even 54.4% of the patients were experiencing suicidal ideations or have even attempted suicide. So this can actually be very, very serious for a patient to go through and should be taken seriously by providers. And in fact, of all of those benzodiazepine users who were surveyed, 76.6 of them reported having long lasting symptoms of BIND. So these symptoms were actually lasting for months to even years after they had been tapered off of their benzodiazepine. And over 50% reported symptoms persisting for over a year. And these symptoms include things like low energy, difficulty focusing, memory loss, anxiety, insomnia, sensitivity to light and sound, digestive problems, symptoms that were triggered by eating food or drinks, muscle weakness, and even body pain were reported. And so what can we do about this? What can we do about BIND? Well, first things first is prevention. So don't start a benzodiazepine. And if you're a prescriber, don't prescribe them unless absolutely necessary. And typically it's reserved for short-term use of things like panic disorder. So no longer than four weeks and emphasizing the intermittent use of it, not the daily use of the benzodiazepine. Now, another use would be status epilepticus or seizure disorder that does not respond to antileptic medications. That could be an exception here. But by and large, benzodiazepines and even those Z drugs like the Zolpidems, the Zolpiclons, those medications that are used for insomnia, those can also be culprits here and cause a benzodiazepine-like injury because they act on the benzodiazepine receptors very similarly to the benzodiazepines. And when it comes to things like insomnia, therapy is actually the first-line treatment. 
So make sure that you are emphasizing skills before pills for your patients, referring them to therapy or referring them to psychiatry if you feel they do need a medication to help support their severe anxiety state. And another important thing to know is that if you are suffering from bind or if you're a provider and you have a patient that you think is suffering from bind and they're still taking their benzodiazepine, you wanna make sure to taper them off, but taper them off slowly. You have to do it very, very slowly, especially when they're injured. They're going to need very, very small dosage decreases, and it would be wise to consult with a benzodiazepine-informed provider on how the taper schedule should go if you're not sure how to taper someone off of a benzodiazepine. And if you're a patient, make sure that you find a provider who understands how to taper off of benzodiazepines, and you can use resources such as the Maudsley Deprescription guidelines and another thing that you can do if you're suffering from bind is to join a support group and get around people who have similar experiences to you that can offer you support because it can get very dark and lonely in this state of benzo induced uh, neurological injury and that's why I mentioned that over 50% of these people end up having suicidal thoughts and even have attempted suicide. So it's important that you're getting supported by others in this process. And I'll make sure to link to a couple of support groups that I feel are very beneficial for those who are going through benzodiazepine induced neurological dysfunction or even need help tapering off of their benzodiazepines. So check the description if that's something that you're looking for or something that you feel you need. So that wraps up the video on BIND. Do you have any experience with benzo-induced neurological dysfunction and want to share it with others? Go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below because we all learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I look forward to seeing you all next week.